Oh my God, the echo. And every small little sound is gonna be cracking like, like popcorn sounds. I'm in a giant NBA hall, one table, and the typical Irish weather. Awesome. Hi players, welcome to Dublin Table Tennis. I'm your coach, Eddie Zayla, and today's tactical training video, we're gonna talk about the opponent's serve, so how to receive it, how to apply it, and how to tactically, strategically win the points from his serve. Now, this game, this uh, scenario is completely different from what we did last week. Last week, we talked about how to win the point off your style of game. This week, we're gonna talk about how to correctly and smartly answer someone's serve, and especially if you don't know the player at all. Um, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm horrible at Let's just get to it. Now, player, this video was requested by a subscriber from a previous video that he left his comment in. So if you have any suggestions for the next week's video, any questions at all about table tennis, leave your coach comment below. Make sure you subscribe to me so you don't miss your other videos. And yeah, I hope you enjoy today's video. The scenario that we're going to be doing today is that you and I can play a game. We don't know each other, okay? We don't know our styles or weaknesses, or whatever. I'm gonna be serving to you first, okay? I'm gonna to serve to your backhand short, your middle table short, and your forehand short. And let's say you're the player that is not yet comfortable to do a forehand flick or a backhand flick. So I'm gonna teach you tactics on where to chop the ball and where not to chop the ball, because you can lose points as well by making silly mistakes. Now, part of the scenario is that you're going to be right-hand player and you're going to be in your corner the whole time. So that's where the camera is going to sit. I'm going to give you a realistic idea of how the ball is going to look like every time it's served short to you. And I angle you in a way that you can see the table and placements where you can expose me as well. Let's jump in. Let's jump right to it. My first serve is going to be in your backhand, nice and short, right in that position. Now, I have just served you. I'm in my very position, okay? You have three spots where you can put the ball successfully in a defensive mindset of a chop. And that is somewhere in the middle, right here. And just somewhere, sorry. More like first bounce on this side and the second bounce on this side, but not trying to make it long. Trying to make it kind of awkward for me because this way, if I want to attack, I might have to adjust my feet. Not might, I will have to adjust my feet and if the ball has more, more momentum to come in from this side to that side, my missed timing will miss the shot. B, I will come in for a chop, and straight away, your next response is gonna be aimed right here, okay? Right here in the middle of the corner, so that way I can't get the ball. So that's your first placement of your chop, from coming from here to there. Your second response is, check out where my elbow is, okay? And that's for anyone. So, there, so wherever the elbow is, my elbow is right here, this, this case is right here. What you want to do is chop long and fast to me if you don't want to attack it. Right here in this area deep here. Because if I don't adjust myself, I will miss the shot. I will be like in a weird position right here and try and do something weird. But either way, I'm in completely out position, out position with my foot foot. That's plan number two. Number three, deep right here. Okay, again, I can't return like that. So I will have to move more away to return it with a chop or with the attack. And again, you can expose my whole forehand's placement right there. So those are three spots that you should do if you receive a short serve in your backhand. Now, the second serve I'm gonna give you is short in the middle. So now you're in the middle of the table. See your position right here. If you give me a chop, well, this time I'll be more prepared to be ready for a backhand flick or with a forehand flick. So you have to use the other two spots that's available to you. And hopefully you did not use them already because they might be a little more, well, I'll be a little bit more prepared because I know where you're coming with your shots. But you go in the corner that you didn't use. And let's say last point, you chop to me in the middle, okay? This time around, again, check my elbow, serve long, the first bounce will be right here, or serve long in the corner with the first bounce. And again, if I don't position myself, if I'm not ready, I will mess up. And even if I do get the ball back, let's say I come back with the ball here, why? Because you chopped it long and fast, even just with some momentum, then my response to you, willingly or unwillingly, 
nine or ten times is going to be long, which means you can start the attack, you can initiate the power rally, and most likely you will win the point that way. But if I do return it, let's say I somehow get ready and I return your middle shot or your backhand shot, it won't be as fast as I would want to. And again, you have a better chance to counter me in sort of an opening position right here. Even if the ball is not that spinny with quality, you are positioning and still expose me a lot. So that is where you go in the next position. Now, my last serve to you is going to be in a forehand area for you. Nice and short, just like this. Now, forehand flick placement is a lot more dangerous for you than me. And let me show you why. If you do long here in this corner with one bounce, I can do a backhand topspin to your backhand drive area. And you know, you're not there because you just did a forehand chop to me. If you do it long in a forehand, boom, same thing. I can attack you and I start the initial rally. So you only kind of sort of two options in this case. The first case is to drop the ball in, in my backhand area. And hopefully the second bounce is about in this side. If it's too high and too slow, I can come in with a forehand flick attack. Or if it's too high completely, I can smash you. So what you're hoping to do is the first bounce to be here and the ball straddling and just above before the right net and bounces again. That way I can attack you with my forehand. Let's say I do realize that it's too short. I'm probably gonna answer with my forehand flick or not sorry, flick, but my forehand chop. And that ball is gonna go to you in your forehand area and with power and or placement, you can expose myself right here in this corner or this area, right? Because I'm not ready to attack. Now, once you get better, this is a really smart tactical move and you, want, you, and you can keep the ball away from me and make me move. And that is by putting the racket up instead of sideways and follow through chop to the side of the table. So the ball for me is gonna come right here and the second bounce is gonna be off the table. And if it's very short, I can't attack it. I won't be able to flick it. My only way is to obviously chase it around the, on the side, do a, four, do a forehand chop, and maybe do a forehand topspin. But the point is, my whole backhand's exposed and you can just kind of drive it and block it in my backhand area and I have to come all the way around to attack it. And by the third shot, you should be able to attack me and finish me off. And, and, and that's your forehand uh, chop placements. Now, I know there was a lot of information, so let me run through a quick summary of what to do. In, in the shortest way of form, just make a note of your opponent, okay? The left hand or the right hand, and then expose their weaknesses accordingly. So the first one is make note of the elbow, wherever the elbow may be. Focus that area of the placement of the ball that will always make the player move and have to adjust in diet, and that's how you can expose them and create openings for yourself. Vice versa, if wherever they are, aim for their backhand corner if it's here or if it's there but aim for their backhand corner the smartest and the safest choice is always to make it short in the middle medium height not medium height sorry medium speed because you would you don't want to adjust too long otherwise they'll be there ready to attack you so you want the second bounce to be just before it makes it tricky for us, your opponents to read it and uh, remember if it comes on your forehand flick, try to get a little bit more braver and be more aggressive onto attacking it because that is the biggest weakness that you have in terms of chopping. That kind of focuses more on the opponent rather than yourself. If the ball comes back into your backhand or middle short, yeah, you have more space, more availability, more flexibility to uh, create troubles for the opponent. But if it comes on your, on your forehand, be brave, try to attack and if not, do a smart short serve in the placement and be ready to create the attack because that's what's going to happen most likely. So yeah, I think that's it for me. Remember a quick summary of the of what we just did. Notice where your opponent's elbow is. Aim for that placement on the table. Notice where the person's backhand corner is. Aim for that placement in the table. Uh, notice where the sideways is for the forehand chop. So you can aim for that corner side area. But if you all the safest, cho uh, safest choice, choice, geez, safest choice, and the smartest decision, decision is always to make it medium, short, sort of wherever they have to move. Because you know, if you make it too short, let's say the ball bounces right here, I'll be ready to do a backhand or a forehand flick. But if you make it more deeper and the ball's traveling with momentum, 
but decent momentum with decent spin, it's harder for the opponent to react to it and they have to get more flexible in terms of their technique because if they overdo it, the ball goes, you know, a wall completely. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this is uh, productive for you to listen, to watch. And again, apologies for a lot of information. But yeah, leave, leave a comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next week.